Hi there, welcome to daytime. It is a Tuesday. Mark is on vacation. I love that opening music. Here. I love that opening music. You're coming right along. <laughs> and look who's in the driver's seat today. Terry Barner joins us. Howdy, howdy. Star of stage, of small screen, of large screen. Oh, go on. Go on. No, please, go on. And just the nicest guy you ever want to meet. Oh, thanks. Good to have you here. Thanks. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm you being here. over in one of those chairs because we've interviewed you on the show several oh, times. Oh, man. Yeah, probably six, seven times I've been here. For productions that you've been involved with. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them. Oh, my son still talks about you. As the father in the Christmas story. <laughs> well, that was you know, one of his favorites, and to this day is still one of his favorite plays. You know the lovely uh, Randolph J. Oh, Randolph yes. J. Johnson. He yes. was here just a few weeks ago. Uh, yes, he was. I believe Michael was on here uh, on that day as well. He was. Um, Randolph found me a old man bobblehead <laughs> from the Christmas story with him holding the lake lamp and. Bob. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Did you put it on the front dash of the car? Uh, no, no, because it's made of clay, and the way I drive it, it wouldn't last <laughs> more than a day or two. As you can tell, I had the sunroof open this morning. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day outside. You know what? It is beautiful outside oh, today, just... and I love the hair. What did you call it? Your... This is my it's... flock of seagulls hair to celebrate episode 1980 of daytime. Of daytime. <laughs> yeah. Getting back to the 80s again. You can see, uh, oh, I apologize. Yes, a... These are what I call excitement bags. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I was, I was up all night. I went to bed at a decent time because I thought I need to be sharp. I need to be on the ball for the show today. And then I laid in bed and my brain was going like a million hours an hour. What am I going to ask Michael? What am I going to ask Wendy? What am I going to ask Dana? And uh, boy, oh boy, I solved a couple of the world's problems, but. So these are excitement bags, so I was just excited. It looks that. just fine. What I do every day, if you just lift your chin up a little bit like that, they go away with the light. So hey, if we just that? sit here like oh, this, gosh. we're fine. Sue. It's just fine. Sue, Susan. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Tricks of the trade, you'll learn them fast enough. That's right? great. Oh, and we have uh, Dana Short here from Dana Short uh, Gourmet Made Easy. She is going to be at uh, Shea Daytime showing us some special recipes with asparagus. I'm not even going to tell you because it totally blew me away when she told me what it was and I just, I'd never even thought of it and I'm fascinated. We talk about another harbinger oh. of spring when you start seeing the asparagus, asparagus come out. And I noticed that she had the green and she had the white asparagus. I have never yes, yes. tried the white. And I don't I mean, know if it's any different tasting, if you know. have to cook it differently, if you have to do anything different Maybe with it. Maybe it's just pickled. Else. I don't Maybe know. it's just very young as far I guess. I'm just, I'm just hoping that by the end of the segment we will have the answer to that age-old question that's on everybody's lips. Okay. Why does my pee turn green and smell <laughs> funny when I eat asparagus cool? <laughs> that's why Dana's here. That's why we bring in the experts, Terry. Answer those questions We're not just entertainment. More. We're information here on daytime. <laughs> Starting now. Go. <laughs> Listen, when I said earlier that you're star of, of screen and stage and everything, I, I wasn't kidding. Now, you said you were on stage yesterday. You were working with some kids at oh, yeah. Centennial Public School. Yeah, I'm helping, out, I'm helping out with the directing of uh, uh, Romeo and Harriet, is what it's called. And it's a, it's a parody, a musical parody of <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. That in oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's hammy, it's wonderful, it's got rap, it has everything in it. It's, it's, it's a hoot of a show. It's really and the it's, way Shakespeare wanted it. Yeah, I think that's how it was but originally it intended. Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently, one of the things you learn in this is the first draft of the play was actually called Romeo and Harriet. And then it was later on that he changed the name to Juliet. So the grade seven and eights at Centennial School are doing this show. And I started out last year uh, when my son Christian was still at the school and helped them uh, direct their show. So I just, I just work with the kids. And once they learn their lines and they have the blocking down, I just, I, we go into a room and we talk about the character and, and what, you know, what happened before the scene and what do you want to happen in this scene. And, and just help them really get into a character so that they don't just... Go up on stage and say the line. Read some lines. Yeah, exactly. And, do that. So it's and when, a lot of fun. when can we see the production? It is actually uh, opening uh, tomorrow night. It's on. It's on this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I'm actually going this afternoon to see the school show. They have the feeder. The feeder schools right. coming in to watch the show. So I'll go check that out, and um, we might do a couple of final tweaks. You'll be like the proud papa. Yeah, I, do. Oh, I do. Do you I throw do. roses at them at I the end stand, and everything? No, I just stand just... at the back and get misty. And... <laughs> I am. I'm a sap. I'm a sap. I. I inherited from my father. I love you all. It's the Hungarian thing where, you know, your tear ducts are just too close to your bladder. And so it's, just, it's one of those Hungarian things. You learn to live with it. I had never had it explained to me like that before, Terry. Makes so much more sense now. Information, but, not just entertainment. Well, this is why you're there helping them, because you yourself, being an, an actor of note, and most recently, I think this is one of your most recent works. It is, yes. Star in, in Hollywood Land. Yes. That was my, my day in a big Hollywood. Oh, do we get to see it? you? There's Ben, Ben Affleck. Oh, 
We're on a first name basis now. There's Ben. There you go. I just call him B. There you go. And there's oh, you? Yeah, God, I can't. You need to lighten that up again. Just watching that scene, I can still taste that cigar. <laughs> oh, man. I, for any of you people who... It's Waterloo Region. We almost had to cut that out, you know. For anybody who might be interested, or whether or not, I'm going to talk anyway. Um, there he is. You look mean there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I was, I was Buddy Adler, who was a real person. Okay. He actually produced From Here to Eternity. This scene here, um, Ben Affleck's playing George Reeves, who was the Superman on TV. Okay. And he fought and fought to get this small role in From Here to Eternity. And uh, Buddy Adler uh, is the producer of this movie, and so they're at the original screening, the first screening. And what happened was he comes on the screen, and people start going, "It's Superman! Oh my God! Faster than a speeding bullet!" See that? Yeah. So they actually superimpose Ben onto the screen with uh, Burt Lancaster. Isn't that wonderful? And then I cut him out of the movie, and Ed, Buddy Adler was an actual person. He did Bus Stop and South Pacific, and yeah. So it was, it was, it was a neat. It was a great, great, wow. my great day in Hollywood. I got to sit in a. Uh, a makeup chair. First of all, I get to the set. The first thing they say is, Mr. Barna, I'll take you to your trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it was great. And so and I go there, and my clothes are laid out, and then they come and get me. We're ready for you in makeup now. And, and so I go to my makeup trailer, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm sitting with Diane Lane here and Ben Affleck here. <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, this, it, this is Did you cool. have the giddy laugh? Did you I sort did. of break up? <laughs> I didn't know that line. <laughs> I, I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, no, I tried to stay pretty cool. I gave, I gave Ben the manly, how was it going? Yeah. You know, and Diane was and very said, nice. And dude. Diane touched me. <laughs> and uh, it was, she touched me. <laughs> But uh, it was it was a great day. But that wow. cigar, oh man, they they wanted me to smoke cigarettes, and I said I, I cannot smoke a cigar. I've never smoked in my life, and I said I could probably tough through a stogie because I don't have to inhale. <laughs> and so they basically hand me a stogie and they light the thing and we smoke. And then he yells cut, and somebody runs up and grabs my my cigar Takes note. and cuts it, <laughs> and then goes and gets a new cigar and cuts it at the exact same spot. And ah, they, the and continuity had, oh, person. My, oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure it, was, it doesn't get any shorter it was, well, than it's supposed I, to be. I felt special. So how long did it take? You're, are you just in that scene? That's the, that's my scene. Okay. It was, uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe 30, 45 seconds. What's cool there was, was going in a big theater and, and seeing yourself 30 feet high and getting a close-up. So that was, <laughs> was kind of neat. I felt very glorious once. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, Here I am sitting beside you. It now. was, oh, please. It was, uh, it was a big thing. He touched me. I'm oh, sorry. Anyway. Yes. We have to move along. We're getting the signal from our director. Uh -oh. We're talking too much. Man. Having too Man. much fun. No, the day. This is where we try to teach our, our viewership a little oh, bit something. Excellent. So you take a look at this. There you go. Why don't you read that for us? In silent Aboriginal hunting language, a closed hand slowly opening is meant to show that a kangaroo is near. <laughs> Always useful. Always useful. Did you know that on this day, in 1883, Regina was named the capital of the Northwest Territories. I did not know that. At the time Why was, was that not up in the I don't know. That At the time, it was actually called uh, Pilo Bones, which I'm sure it didn't get its name from people falling off a cliff. <laughs> Regina. You've been saving that one all. I, well, you know what? I read it in the paper morning. today, and I thought I could That's use very that. That's interesting. I can use that. I did not know that. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Should I do this now for a segue? Well, that means a kangaroo is near if you do that. Oh, but I, yeah. I don't know what you do for a dog. I'm not quite sure. But whatever. There we go. A dog is near, and that's because it is time for Daytime's Adopted Pet Kitchen. the kitchen to ask that age-old burning question of Dana Short about asparagus when we come back.